a central angle measurement is, and we already reviewed this, a central angle measurement is the same as the intercepted arc. We already put that on our paper earlier. We already reviewed that. So a central angle measurement is the, sa is the same as an intercepted arc. So I have a little picture I'm going to draw here of an example. I know it's really teeny, so hope you can make use of it. If that central angle is 100 degrees, what's the measurement of the arc? It's also going to be 100 degrees. Thank you, DJ. So the angle and the arc are the same measurement, both 100 degrees. What if the arc was um, 120 degrees? What would the angle be? 120 degrees. It goes both ways. They're the same either way. Either this is the same as this, or this is the same as this. The converse and the conditional are both true. If this is 100, that is 100. If this is 100, that is 100. Okay, here's where we learn something new that you can't mix up with the last one. An inscribed angle measurement, so there's an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle measurement is half of the intercepted arc. Half of the intercepted arc. So let's say that this arc is 100 degrees again. What's the angle in there going to be? The angle will only be 50 degrees because it's inscribed instead of central. You could even look at it. If you were to imagine measuring that angle with a protractor, which is an acute angle, compared to measuring that angle with a protractor, which is slightly obtuse, they're different, aren't they? But look at the arc length. Doesn't that arc length look really close to that arc length? Because those arcs are supposedly the same. Now, I didn't measure carefully, so I don't know for sure that they are. I just tried to make it look that they're about the same. But the angle is obviously smaller than that one. Something that's really cool is if you inscribe a triangle in a circle, this is just a separate, just a bit of trivia for you. If you inscribe a triangle in a circle, then this angle is half of this arc, and this angle is half of that arc, and this angle is half of that arc. What will all three arcs of the circle add up to? How many degrees? 360, because all the way around a circle is 360 degrees. What will the three angles in a triangle add up to? 180. <gasps> How is 180 related to 360? It's half. That's because each of those angles is half of those intercepted arcs. And the entire circle is 360, so the triangle is half that, 180. Is that kind of cool? We just proved our triangles add up to 180 in another way. Okay, two chords in the same circle that are congruent intercept arcs that are congruent. Two arcs in the same circle that are congruent intercept arcs that are congruent. So let's put a chord here and a chord, I don't know, over here somewhere. I'm trying to make them look the same. So let's say that this chord is 10 centimeters long, which I know it's not because that's a teeny tiny circle. And let's say that this chord is 10 centimeters long. What does that tell us about the two chords? If I say they're both 10 centimeters long? They're going to be the same length. Okay? Now, if they're the same length, guess what we know about those two, those two arcs? They're going to be the same measurement, the same number of degrees. Now, I don't know what the degrees is exactly. I just know they're going to be the same. So let's just, let's just call it x. Let's say that this is x degrees. This would also be x degrees because whatever that degrees is, this would be exactly the same. So they are equal. They are congruent. Okay. Two tangents.
tangent lines on the same circle that intersect outside of the circle form, now I don't have my actual notes with me, so now I have to remember how I worded this. Okay, let me draw it out, and then I'll remember better what it is talking about, and maybe I'll be able to remember what I'm trying to say. Okay, two tangent lines on the same circle that intersect outside of the circle. So here's a line that's tangent to the circle right there, and here's a line that's tangent to the circle right there. By the way, when tangent, I didn't write this part on here, but this is something that wouldn't be a bad idea to know. When a line is tangent to the circle, if you draw a radius at that point, that's going to be a 90 degree angle. So at this tangent line, if this, ra this radius is going right to that tangent point, that's also going to be a 90 degree angle. Okay, but that's not what I was going to write here. What I was going to write here is what I've marked right here in this picture. And that is, if two tangent lines intersect out of the side of the circle, then those two segments are going to be congruent. Two tangent lines on the same circle that intersect outside of the circle form congruent segments. Maybe that's all we need to say. Maybe that's enough with the picture. They form congruent segments so that those two segments are equal to each other. What if I have a different tangent line over here? Are those two segments also going to be congruent to those two segments? Look at their lengths. These two are much longer than those two are. However, these two are congruent, but guess what? These two are also congruent, aren't they? You're always going to have these little sets of congruent segments where the two tangent lines intersect. Okay. Last thing, and my circle kind of cut off the bottom of the page here apparently, but we can still do this. The measurement of the angles formed by intersecting chords in a circle can be found by... Okay, let's draw what's happening first. The measurement of the angles formed by two intersecting chords in a circle... So there's two intersecting chords make my circle a little bigger. Okay, so right in here where I've made my chords intersect, I have four angles, correct? Four sets of vertical angles, well, two sets of vertical angles. So I have these two angles that are vertical, and so they're congruent. And then I have these two sets of angles that are vertical, and so they are congruent. So I've got these two vertical angles, and I've got this angle that's vertical to that one, so those are congruent, okay? All right, let's complete this sentence, though, first, this um, property that we're learning. The measurement of the angles formed by intersecting chords in a circle can be found by finding... Thank you. The average of the measures... of the intersected arcs, or the intercepted arcs, however we want to say that. Intercepted, it starts, it's a C. Finding the average of the measures of the intercepted arcs. Now how do you find an average? Do you remember how to find an average? What do we do when we're finding an average? Find an average. Okay, good. Add things together and then divide by how many there are, right? So if you have if you're finding your grade point average, you have eight classes maybe, you add your the numbers that go with your eight grades together and you divide by eight. Or seven if you have release time, right? So anyway, um, here we're gonna talk about these two arcs. We're gonna do the average of the two arcs to find these two angles. So let's, I'm just going to estimate the sizes of these arcs. Just, I'm basically just going to throw numbers on them. So these aren't accurate, but I'm just going to say that this arc is maybe 70 degrees. That might be a little big for it, actually, but we'll just pretend. 
And then let's say that this arc here, it's got to be pretty big, like more than, not half of the circle, so not clear up to 180, but definitely obtuse, right? So probably, I don't know, let's go with like 120 degrees or something like that. So if this arc, this arc from here to here is 70 degrees, and this arc from here to here is 120 degrees, how can we use those arcs to find the measurement of these angles? What can we do? How do you find an average? Add them and divide them, right? So I have two arcs, and I want to find the average. What do I do? 70 plus 120 equals 190. Then there were two numbers that I added, so what do I divide by? Divide by 2 because there's two of them. What's 190 divided by 2? 95 degrees. So according to that calculation, what should these two angles in here be that are across from each other right here? They should both be 95 degrees because that's the average of those arcs. And also they are vertical angles, so they are equal to each other. Now, how could you find the angles the other direction if you wanted to? Even though I don't know these arc, I don't know these arcs. How can I find those angles without knowing those arcs? Yeah, David, this arc. Wait, John. Sorry, it's been a couple months, hasn't it? <laughs> um, this arc plus this arc have to add up to 180 because it's a straight line. So if that arc, if that not arc but angle, if that angle is 95, then what's that angle gonna be? 85, because they would add up to 180. And then across from each other, those two angles will be the same. So what will those two angles both be? They'll both be 85. And then all three angles would add up to 360. All three, all four. I can't count today. It must be Friday. I'm tired. Okay, let me get your assignment out to you, and we'll do some of the problems together. Okay.